The fall time of year is when I like to junk fish the most. This one you're going to see me with eight or nine rods on the deck of my boat for different situations and to help me catch bass under different conditions. And it's really going to be broken down into two categories. Baits that I can cover water with, fish quickly, use on high percentage locations to see if bass are there, and then slow moving baits that I can really maximize that area with. So those two different types of baits are what I'm going to be breaking down in today's video. Now if you guys watched my last video, I really talked about the three keys to fall bass fishing and how I utilize these baits to really maximize my time on the water. So that's a must see if you guys haven't watched that video already. But let's dive into the baits that I have tied on right now. And these are baits that I have from my past trip on the lake. So these are baits that catch fish and baits that I have faith in. And literally were on the deck of my boat the last time that I was out fishing. My favorite bait to throw during the fall is a crankbait. Man, they're eating it so weird. Fish. And a crankbait is such an effective tool because you can cover a lot of water quickly and they make a bunch of different colors to help you match the hatch or match the forage in a variety of different situations. Now for me a crankbait is going to be a bait that I use especially in dirtier or more off-colored styles of water. If you have visibility more than I would say 8 to 10 foot of water a crankbait might not be the best option, but we're going to dive into some other baits that will allow you to cover those areas. So a crankbait that I like a lot and a bait that I've tied on is a Berkley Dredger 10.5 or 14.5. It's going to depend on the depth that I'm fishing, but it's a really small body crankbait. It casts well and it's going to draw fish from a long ways. The reason I like this, especially when smallmouth fishing, is it's a smaller profile size bait. And even if you're largemouth fishing, it's going to be a bait that's going to get more bites than your bigger, bulkier style crankbaits. The rod that I like to throw both of these these crankbaits on is a TFO tactical glass bass which is a composite rod. It's a 7.4 medium heavy and I like that 7.4 because I can make a long cast with these baits and medium heavy lets me set the hook on these fish in colder water situations where their mouths are hard and get better hookup. The reel that I'm using is a moderate speed 6 speed gear ratio Revo Ike series reel and 12 pound test fluorocarbon line. The other crankbait that I have tied on is this Berkley Money Badger. And this is a new crankbait on the market, but what makes this bait unique is it has a rounded style bill. So if you guys can see that, it sort of looks like a teardrop shaped bill. The benefit of this is that it comes through rock really effectively. Similar to your other rock style crankbaits, the classic wiggle wart, the rock crawler. This is a great bait to fish around rock because that big bill allows us to deflect but also stay very true. They have what's called a flash disc on the bottom of this bait, which you guys might be able to see right there at the nose, and it helps this bait stay stable. So when it deflects, it comes back to center really quickly. This flash disc technology is also really effective when you're wanting to speed crank a crankbait and not hit bottom. It's really great for smallmouth fishing in open water, but what that flash disc does is it keeps this bait super straight and level in the water. That's what makes this bait track so true is that flash disc technology. This is a crankbait that I just added to my arsenal this year and I've been playing with quite a bit. This one's already quite beat up. Again, TFO, tactical glass, and then I have this on um, a six speed gear ratio Revo ALF bait casting reel. So my number one bait when I'm going out fishing, trying to cover water for bass during the fall is gonna be a crankbait. Now if I'm fishing water that has a little bit more visibility or clarity, I like to fish a jerk bait. A jerk bait's a very natural approach and it catches fish in ultra clear water as well as off colored styles of water. The thing that's so powerful about a jerk bait is that it helps draw fish, but it also suspends in the water. So it kind of sits in their face, especially when you get those really cold nights and the water temps fall quickly, having a bait that suspends and can draw fish to the bait when it's suspended up in the water is really important. This is also a great bait if you're live scoping these fish that tend to suspend on glacial bodies of water. It's a bait that you have a lot of control over, can make dart, suspend, sink. It just has a bunch of different applications if you're live scoping with it. This is the Berkley Stun of 112 plus one. In the fall, I like that plus one because I think it gets down a little bit deeper. It helps me cover that more moderate depth, the mid depth part of the water column. And it's just a bait that I have a lot of confidence in and I've caught a bunch of fish on the past two seasons. I'm throwing this on the TFO Resolve 7 foot medium. 
has a really short handle so I can kind of work the bait effectively, but it's a longer jerk bait rod so I can make long casts and get this bait away from the boat. And then again, I'm fishing this on fluorocarbon line. This is 10 pound test fluorocarbon on a Revo ALF. Eight one to one reel. Another very aggressive power fishing technique and a bait that I've really started picking up and putting in my arsenal this season is a bladed jig. And this is the Berkeley Slobber Knocker. This is a half ounce size. Now this is a bait that can be interchanged with a half ounce swim bait, can be interchanged with a spinner bait. But the reason that I have the Slobber Knocker tied on is I was fishing some off colored style of water. I was fishing it moderately shallow, so in like eight foot of water with some grass. And it's a great bait to fish for those smallmouth that are pushing up shallow around shallow cover and give them a presentation that they might not see that often. This setup for me is kind of interchangeable with your 3.3 inch power swimmers, half ounce spinner baits. There's a bunch of different setups you can throw on this, but for me when I'm fishing off colored water, I'm probably going to go with a bladed jig. The rod that I have this on is a TFO 7.3 medium heavy on a Revo ALF with 14 pound test fluorocarbon line. And uh, that's the setup that I really like something moving mid upper column that I can cover water with to get these fish to trigger, especially around shallow cover. And now we're going to focus on a smaller bait, kind of my go-to on those glacial super clean bodies of water is a three inch swim bait. The reason that I like this is it looks super natural, it's non-intrusive, it doesn't spook these fish, and this is the Berkeley Power Ripple Swimmer. So it's more of a walleye style bait, but if you guys can tell, it's been chewed quite a bit. It's a small bait, but it has a really unique action in the water, and it catches a bunch of fish. I've started throwing this since the spring of this year and had a lot of success on this little three-inch size swim bait. This, for me, is going to be great in really clean water situations. So when those fish are keying in on really small bait fish, you get a lot of bites on it, but it also gets really big fish to bite. The rod I'm throwing it on is the TFO 763. This is with a five-speed gear ratio Fluger Supreme XT, I believe. Um, spinning reel, eight pound test braid to eight or six pound test fluorocarbon line. So those are the five baits that I use to cover water with. Now we're going to dive into the baits that I'd like to break down water with. Once I've located bass with one of these baits, I can really slow down and pick apart that area because that's a great part about fall, right? Is these fish are going to group up. There's going to be more than one fish in an area and now you can start to slow down and pick apart an area with one of these baits that I'm going to show you guys right here. The first bait I want to talk about is one of the most popular baits on the season, and this is a Berkeley Little Trooper. It's a small Ned Rig on an eighth up to a quarter ounce size head, depending on the depth you're fishing. But the reason a Ned Rig is so effective is it just tends to get a lot of bites. So a Ned Rig is a really fun bait and really effective when you need to just maximize the bites in an area. The reason I like that Little Trooper is it has a really small style profile, and so it's just an easy bait to throw out there and trust that you're gonna get bit on it. It has that crawfish style claws when it's standing up on the bottom. It's just a small, easy meal for these fish to bite. And then again, I'm throwing that on a TFO 7-1 Tactical Elite Medium Light, and then a five speed gear ratio or a six speed gear ratio spinning reel. Eight pound test braid to six or eight pound test fluorocarbon. Another staple when you're smallmouth fishing is a drop shot. And this is a bait that I actually don't pick up quite as much in the fall. For me, I'd really prefer to go with the Ned Rig. It just tends to get a little bit more bites. But a drop shot is still an effective tool during the fall. It will still help you pick up some fish, especially when you have to dead stick on boulders or fish around, you know, that shallow perch grass. It presents the bait up off the bottom. So I still have a drop shot tied up. That drop shot setup for me is on a 7-1 medium light TFO Resolve with an MGX 30 size reel, eight pound to eight pound braid. Now we're gonna get into some sneaky baits that I like to really pick areas apart with. And these are baits that I've had a lot of success with in the past. The first one that I wanna talk about is a blade bait. And this is a bait that has gotten a lot of popularity over the past couple of years, but it still catches big fish. It's an old school style bait. It's a slab of metal with some lead on it and some hooks. It causes a vibration when you let that bait hit bottom. Lift and drag, lift and drag. And that's a great way when those fish start to push off into that little bit deeper water to maximize the area and get bites. I like to throw this on a seven foot three medium. It's a little bit longer rod, has a little bit more backbone to it, but you can set the hook when that bait's a long ways away from the boat. And then I have that on 10 pound test braided line to eight pound test fluorocarbon and a six speed gear ratio Revo Premier 
spinning reel. So the last bait might catch a lot of people off guard, but it's actually a finesse jig. And this is a bait that I've had a ton of success with this fall. This is the Beast Coast OW Sniper Jig. Shout out to Smallmouth Crush. This is a bait that gets a lot of bites. It's a Smally on that jig. Oh, that jig's so much fun. It's a small profile jig that you can fish around those shallow or moderate depth areas, the same places you fish a tube, but I think it gets bites when other baits just won't because it is a little bit more unique. And then I'm pairing this again with that little trooper as the trailer. It's a really small profile, but I think it helps maximize the bites in the area, and this can be a bait that just seems to get a little bit bigger than average bite. The other thing about this is it's a lot of fun to fish. You can fish it on a bait caster. The bites are just like you would get on a normal style dragon jig or flipping jig. The rod that I like to throw this on is not my typical jig rod. It's a 7.3 medium heavy. It's a little bit softer rod, and I'm fishing it with 12 or 14 pound test fluorocarbon line and a Revo ALF eight speed gear ratio bait casting reel. But this is a fun way to get a lot of big bites and it catches a lot of big fish. In my next video, I'm gonna share with you guys a variation on one of the baits I showed you in today's video, talking about a Japanese technique making its way to the US to catch suspended bass during the fall. It's a very tough time to get those bass to bite when they start to suspend. I wanna share with you guys a sneaky way that I've been able to get these fish into the boat. So if you guys wanna check out the last video I posted, click right here, the three keys to fall bass fishing. Click right here if you're not already subscribed. And if you guys wanna check out any of the baits in today's video, Click the links, it'll take you to the Omnia website where you guys too can gear up for fall time bass fishing. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys for watching. Take care, tight lines. God bless. Pursue passion.